So Caleb Williams did not suit up for USC's bowl game, but is leaving the door open to return to school, despite being the consensus number one overall pick. Williams telling the LA Times last month, it's still, quote, a game time decision whether or not he'll declare for the NFL draft. The 2022 Heisman Trophy winner has until January 15th to declare. Could the potential landing spot sway Williams' decision? The Bears currently hold the first pick via the trade with the Carolina Panthers and have a 96% chance at staying there, according to Sportsline's projections. Williams made headlines over the weekend by liking a post on social media that the Bears should draft Ohio State wideout Marvin Harrison Jr. and stick with Justin Fields at quarterback. For a deeper dive, we now welcome in CBS Sports senior draft expert Ryan Wilson. And Ryan, how much stock do you put into the potential landing spot impacting a decision that Williams is about to make? I think it, Jim, would probably, and I'm dating myself here, it might be in Caleb's best interest just to stay off social media and not give people ammunition uh, to use towards him as we go through this draft process because we still have about 120 days until the actual NFL draft. Yeah. And that's going to be a talking point, fair or not, whether Caleb Williams is mature enough to handle being the number one overall pick, to be being QB1, to going to an organization that almost certainly will be struggling and need his help. There's no doubt that he is a special talent, and I cannot stress stress that enough and look the storylines that he wasn't trying hard or that he gave up at times during the season are all bogus those are not true at all he is a special player and he played as hard as anyone in college football last fall he just could not drag that team that struggled with protecting him along the offensive line and had a bad defense at USC that he could not tra drag them over the finish line uh, as often as he would have liked they lost a ton of games down the stretch but if you want an indication of who Caleb Williams is go watch their last game what I would almost certainly guess would be his last game in college football Football, even though he has yet to declare, Jim, against UCLA, which has a top flight defense. They're going to have some dudes drafted early off that defense. He was throwing the ball on time. He was throwing the ball accurately, and he was doing a lot of things he's going to be asked to do at the NFL level. Now, the biggest issue isn't whether he's liking certain posts or not on Instagram. The, the biggest issue, and I've had teams tell me this, is uh, how involved is his dad going to be? Because that's going to be a conversation, and one phrase that I keep hearing when talking to teams is uh, LeVar Ball. So that's <laughs> something that has to be managed. Good. Right, and then that's <laughs> right. That's not great, especially when you're investing hundreds of millions of dollars. So right. that'll have to be managed on one side, and you have to figure out what to do uh, in terms of the entire package that comes with Caleb Williams. Yeah, those numbers are off the uh, charts. 93 to 10 touchdown to interception ratio combined over the last two seasons for Williams. Second player off your board in the latest mock draft is Drake May. Do you believe he has cemented himself as the number two option behind Williams, or can he change? Change team's mind and jump up in this draft process. Jump up or perhaps even fall down a little bit? That's going to be True. another question. So True. Drake May, spotless in terms of being uh, off the field concerns. His, he comes from a family of athletes. His brother, Luke May, was a part of that UNC national title team on, uh, on the basketball team a few years ago. Uh, shock full of athletes, great people, every, checks every box in terms of doing the, the, the evaluations off the field with Drake May. Didn't have the best season uh, in terms of stats-wise. The offense yep. changed. He lost some of the playmakers. Didn't get his big playmaker uh, Tez Walker back until a few games into the season because of the NCAA stuff that was going on. But he makes a lot of big-time throws. He's a fantastic in space. He's a great athlete. He looks the part in terms of his size yep. and his, his build and his physicality and his arm strength. There are teams that will consider him over Caleb Williams because of the things I talked about with Caleb off the field concerns and not just primarily being his dad now that he's a bad kid. The other name to keep an eye on, Jim, Jaden Daniels, yep. Heisman Trophy winner. Yep. And when I put, the, put this mock draft together, I texted a few people in the league and said, is it crazy to think that Jaden could go ahead of Drake May? And the response I got back is, it's not crazy at all. And that's going to be a conversation we're going to have over the next four or five months as we sort this out. Because Drake is a, a different player than Jaden, which is who's a different player than Caleb. And depending on what you like, and by the way, Jaden Daniels reminds me a lot of Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. Guess who's the favorite to win the MVP? Yep, yep. And if teams like that, 
Jaden might be their flavor of the month for sure. Yeah, they're all three different types of players in their own right, and Daniels had a spectacular season this past year for LSU. Now, we know Daniels will be among the top quarterbacks pick, but, well, we, he also has opted out of LSU's bowl game. But how about a trio of quarterbacks who will play? Michigan's J.J. McCarthy versus Alabama and the Rose, Oregon's Bo Nix in the Fiesta against Liberty, and Washington's Michael Penix Jr. versus Texas. Which of the three will improve their draft stock more with a strong bowl season showing? Jim, shout out to the graphics team for covering up the gray and Bo Nix and Michael Penix's pictures because they've been in college so long, so they still look young and spry. But J.J. McCarthy is definitely the guy that can help himself the most. Uh, he's younger than those two, and by a large margin, I would imagine. Uh, but hey, look, he was not asked to do a lot at Michigan. Uh, that team is so stocked on both sides of the ball. He was primarily asked to be a game manager and occasionally make some throws. Look, he did not have a great season. You go back and watch some of his games, and there's some questionable throws, but then you see the athleticism and then you see the glimpses of the arm strength and the decision making and then you see the other side of that coin in which he makes some bad throws uh, he makes some poor decisions uh, he wasn't asked to do a lot in some of the games late in the season where they handed off what felt like 50 straight times so going into this game which is again going to be the final four as you prepare to get to that national title game if everything goes well against a really good Alabama defense if he balls out in that game and perhaps there's an opportunity to play in another game that's for all the marbles so to speak we're going to have a conversation similar to the one we had last year when everyone said, so C.J. Stroud's a great pocket passer. Is he mobile? And then the Georgia game happened, and everyone's like, oh, this guy is not messing around. And we see that week in and week out now for the Texans when C.J. Stroud's healthy and is on the field. So I think that's an opportunity for J.J. McCarthy to make those same sort of strides. Bo Nix, I think he'll probably end up being a day two guy. There are teams that like him, but there's concerns uh, about his decision-making consistently. And then Michael Penix Jr., the only issue I have with him is that he had two ACLs in Indiana, but that's two years ago. Yep. He's been healthy. He's the best deep ball thrower in this game, has a huge arm, and I think he has a chance to be a first-round pick. Yeah, these college football playoffs will be a great venue to see with some of these quarterbacks, and I'm not leaving out Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers, too, because if he has a big showing, he could jump into the draft and perhaps be a second-round pick as well. That's Ryan Wilson. Ryan, we appreciate the draft insight, and for more draft coverage, be sure to check out with the first pick podcast, Ryan Wilson and longtime NFL GM Rick Spielman dive into mock drafts, prospect rankings, stock watch, notable interviews, and much, much more. Download and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.